Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics, unitary groups. A uh, unitary group is a group of unitary n by n matrices where the binary operation is matrix multiplication. Notice that n by n are square matrices and the condition for unitarity is the dagger, the Hermitian conjugate, must be equal to the inverse. Let's look at one by one matrices. You might say, well, like, what is that? Well, that's just simply a matrix with one element. You just have an A sub 1, 1. That's a cute matrix. And if you want to look at the Hermitian conjugate, there's no off diagonal components to swap, so all you have to do is take the complex conjugate of the element. So it's U complex conjugate. If you multiply these two, matrix multiplication for a single entity in a you know one by one matrix, you simply multiply the single entity. So it's U complex conjugate U. And that must equal one according to the definition of the unitarity. So in that case, we can parametrize the elements by u of theta where we have e to the i theta and there's no need to put the brackets here down. It's only just one element in the matrix so we often just simply write like this. Closure applies because if we take two of these and multiply them together you find here by adding alpha plus beta you get another angle and therefore this element is in the group also. Association works because uh, multiplication is associative and here when you multiply exponentials you're actually adding exponents and addition is associative so it works. Association is fine. Identity works uh, here because we, ha we have an identity element where the angle theta is zero. We have e to the zeroth power is a one. That's our identity. And the inverse is given by minus theta. So the inverse of the theta case is to simply put a minus sign in front of the i theta, which is, by the way, con the condition of the unitary matrix idea where the inverse is obtained by simply taking the dagger, and, and the dagger here would simply be star, take the complex conjugate because there's no off diagonal elements to swap. So that's neat that it all works together. Special unitary matrices have the additional constraint that the determinant of the matrix must be equal to 1. So here the determinant of a single 1 by 1 matrix is simply that element U and that must be 1. Well if that's the case the group SU1 contains a single matrix 1, a 1 by 1 matrix 1. Uh, this is closure if you multiply this by itself you get it, you get it back association if you were to do like a times a times a and you know do it do the first two and the second two that would work Clo closure association works and then what's next is the identity well we have the identity there it is it's the only element and the inverse yeah that's its inverse too so uh, this is a group with a single matrix let's go to two by two matrices special unitary two by two matrices and here in general I have A, B, C, D for a 2 by 2 matrix and the inverse in general from the last section is given by swapping the diagonals and elements and then putting a minus sign in front of the off diagonal elements and you divide by the uh, determinant. Well for the uh, case of a unitary matrix let's look at what we can say uh, for a unitary matrix. Well here the inverse as found in general, the regular analysis we did in the previous section is this arrangement, but the inverse must also be the Hermitian conjugate. Well the Hermitian conjugate says star everything is swap B and C, star everything is swap B and C. This has to also be the inverse. These must be equal. So A star must equal D and C must equal minus B star minus C is B star, so C is minus B star, along with the, the determinant being equal to 1, which is AD minus BC must equal 1. Uh, notice that minus B equal to C star is already covered because if you star both sides of this equation here, you get C star is minus B. C star is minus B, and if I take the complex conjugate of both sides of this equation, I get A is D star, and this is saying A is D star. So I have everything covered. 
and if I go to writing this out in terms of real imaginary components like where you want to flush all the uh, imaginary parts specifically uh, shown with the I times some real part so A sub R, A sub I these are all real real uh, numbers and you say that's the imaginary part because I is multiplied so like if this were 4 plus 3i the imaginary part is 3 um, a three i, uh, but you have the three as a nice real part, so that you you don't have any hidden eyes. You don't want to have any eyes hidden. So that's the nice thing about this. So all these things that multiply the i are real. So here you have a real number plus i times a real number, an imaginary part, and this is the real part. And we want to impose this condition up here. A star is equal to D, so D is A star. So if you star this, a real number starred doesn't do anything. It's still it's the same thing, like four, uh, complex counter of four is four. And then here you just put a minus sign, whatever you see in I, so that's, that's neat. And then don't worry about the A sub I, since that's the real number that's multiplying the I. Then for the uh, B case, I do the same thing. And then for C, I have minus this star. So if I put a minus sign in front of both and star, it, this uh, minus it becomes a plus, and I get this. And the determinant must be 1. If you multiply these two together, you'll get a real squared plus a i squared. And then if you multiply these together, you get the same uh, configuration with the minus signs in front. And then when you subtract to get your determinant, you will get 1. We're not going to be that concerned uh, with this. We want to focus all our attention on the matrix here. And we will arrive at a very beautiful, elegant derivation, or you could see where the poly matrices are coming from. So we look at this general form for the matrix in the group SU2, and we want to play the game that we played in vectors, where a general vector in three dimensions has an x component, a y component, and a z component. And you have unit vectors here that multiply each of the three components. Playing the same game with a matrix in general, you say, well, we can write this matrix as a sum of four matrices that are really neat, like basis vectors. Here's like a basis vector I had. Here's a basis matrix, kind of like a vector where you have one, zero, zero, zero. You have a one in all zeros, and a one in all zeros, and a one in all zeros. And you say, well, if I have A of this, that'll get me the A part over here, and B of these, right, will get me the B over here, C of this times this would give me the C, and D of that gives me this one. So it's kind of neat. It's like having three basis vectors in, in vector uh, analysis here. You have four, uh, four uh, nice, simple matrices that when multiplied by the various parameters, A, B, C, D, you get this nice arrangement. So if we do that with here, we see there's a, a natural emerging of four basis uh, entities. For example, the A sub R appears in two places. So if A sub R hits the 1, 1 on the diagonal with 0, 0, I capture the A sub R. The I A sub I, the imaginary here, is in the upper left slot, 1, and the lower left slot with a minus 1, and it doesn't appear here. So I get this neat little matrix to take care of that. And then here I have B sub R, or B real, and B real appears in the upper right hand slot as a one. B real down here is negative one, then doesn't appear here, so zeros. And then I B imaginary appears on the off diagonal uh, ones here. The off diagonal here would be a one up here, a one down there, both with a plus sign. And I have it. Now notice I would like to have some uh, s conditions here that are the same. I have an I here. I don't have an I there, but I have an I there. I like to have the three I's there. So if I put an I in front of B real, I then need to have a negative I here. So I times negative I is one, and I times I is negative one. And here you see a natural emergence of the poly matrices. There they are, those three. And the assignments that are made are as follows. The X poly matrix is this one over here, the last one. The Y poly matrix is the middle one here. And the Z poly matrix is this first one. So you have the three poly matrices and the identity element that form a basis here, like four bases, like 
basis vectors to give you the general matrix, the SU2 matrix. And look at that natural occurrence of the three Pauli matrices. Now, here's a neat uh, property of the Pauli matrices. If you should multiply two of them, A times B, where A could be any of the three and B any of the three, and then add B times A, that's called, by the way, the anti-commutator when you do that. Then when A and B are equal, when you have the same one, each of these when multiplied by itself gives identity, and when you add two, the two together, you get twice the identity. But when you multiply one times another and flip it and do it, and add it, you get zero. And the Kronecker delta symbol here is a neat way to write this down. This symbol, the Kronecker delta symbol, is such that if i equals j, these two indices down here, if they're the same, you get a one. If the indices are different, you get a zero. So if like uh, it's uh, two, two, you get a one. If it's two, three, you get a zero. Uh, X, by the way, is one, Y is two, Z is three. So do this neat little problem. Show that the anti-commutator of the Pauli matrices gives you two, the Kronecker delta JK times the identity element. If we uh, look at the commutator, the commutator is to take A times B minus B times A. If we do that, we get another neat little result that can be expressed elegantly with the Levi Civita symbol or the permutation symbol. Now this epsilon um, IJK here is defined that so that IJK, if they're cyclic with one, two, three, or you put the three first, three, one, two, here you always can count from left to right one two three one two three one two three so if I have one two three one two three and go in a cycle here I'm in order one two three see here's one but then if I come back to the beginning two three one two three one two three if that's the case it's plus one if they're out of order like if uh, one uh, see here two and three have been interchanged whoops that doesn't work one three two that's not one two three so that's a minus one here uh, I have one three two again doesn't work. See here I have one two three. Here I have one three two doesn't work. Two are out of uh, order, so that's a minus one. And here one two again out of order, so a minus one. If any two of these happen to be the same, if i equals j or j equals k or k equals i, you get zero. So show that when you uh, work with the commutator of the Pauli matrices, you get 2i times the Levi Civita symbol times the Pauli matrix, the other one that you're not considering, see, uh, if, if they're all different. See, if they're all different, if you have j, k, like if you have 1, 2, this is then 3. If you have 2, 3, this is then 1, and, and so on. If any two of these are the same, you're dead. You get 0. And that means that SU2 is a non-abelian group because they don't commute. If you take you know, A times B, it's not the same as B times A. So check that out, have fun with that. And wait, there's another neat thing here. The special orthogonal, special unitary orthogonal matrices. Check these out. Uh, what we have here, uh, these are, by the way, our friends, uh, the rotation matrix in two dimensions, but what is the definition of an orthogonal matrix? Uh, well, the orthogonal matrix is one where if you were to uh, multiply across and add, you would get zero, and multiply down, you would get zero. In other words, you pretend these are like two vectors, uh, cosine theta, sine theta, and minus sine theta, cosine, and take like a dot product. So you you multiply these two and these two, add them, get zero. Or you, you play the game this way. Um, think of these as being a vector vector this way or being a vector that way. It doesn't really matter. So you have to get here, like for example, A11, A12, A11, A12, we're multiplying left, right. Left, right, left, right. You get cosine, sine, minus sine, cosine, add them, you get zero. So that's like having a vector 
uh, here, uh, like an I hat and a J hat, an I hat and a J cat, and you go I dot I, J dot J. And then here you play the game where the vector is this way, like the first component, I and the J and the I and J, and you dot this way, you dot coming down. So you have minus cosine theta sine plus sine cosine, and you get zero. Notice that this is unitary because if we take the, uh, let's say, the uh, Hermitian conjugate, we would swap these two and put a uh, then well, a complex conjugate doesn't matter because they're all real. We we'll just swap these two, and that is the inverse because that would be the same as making theta minus theta, which is rotating the other way. Say because this uh, cosine's even, they wouldn't change, but the minus sign would be up there and down there. Interesting uh, result. So um, here is a, a specific uh, proof of that. If we simply uh, do the uh, transpose because since complex conjugate is not necessary since they're all real, then we have cosine squared plus sine squared for the one here, cosine times uh, sine with a negative, and then sine cosine with a positive is we get them to get like zero. Here minus sine cosine plus cosine sine zero, and then minus minus gives you sine squared plus cosine squared gives you one. So it it works out. Uh, check this out. A little practice problem here to uh, show that this uh, matrix here is an orthogonal matrix and show that the SO2 group is an abelian group. Well, you kind of know that because when you do these rotations, you can rotate through one angle and then another angle, alpha first, beta second, or beta first, alpha second, and it's going to work. So it's an abelian group. We'll see you in the next section when we do eigenvalues.